to check it out. We're jumping in. We've got Ming on top. Term on the bottom. Term is going to be blue, and Ming is going to be red here. We're starting off with archers in the center. Look at that ice spirit. Look at that archer. The rocket going in. Does it take the mega minion? It so takes everything out. That's valuable. I was going to say, even if you catch one archer. <laughs> Oh man, so we're seeing uh, Archers, Tombstone, Mega Minion, it could be a Telltale Golem deck up top, but we'll have to wait and see. And then on the bottom, the Minor Rocket. There you go, I Naked mean, Knight here with the 15th prediction of the day. I thought the 15th was my last one. 16th. 16th. This, Who's that's actually track? a 16th, I'm not making that number up. <laughs> so anyways, the Golem is going in hot. As you guys have noticed, that the, the, oh my god, look at the log. It, Takes out the tombstone and the skeletons that spawn with it. Just such tech right there. That's one of your favorite plays that you see people make. As soon as the tombstone's below half health, they drop the log, and because of its still sort of slow roll speed, takes out the spawn skeletons. It's just a remarkable play. Such high level tech in these matches right now. Now look at that skeleton bypassing, or the gold golem bypassing that inferno tower. The death damage of those golemites are going to chip away at that tower. We will see golems have difficulty with Inferno, but that one just kind of marched his way to the tower. Yeah. Look at the log right there. He's going to clip both archers. It clips them. The guard jab at them, and that Lumberjack is just tanking at that Mega Minion. So the Lumberjack, we have not seen much And that Mega Minion got decks. one hit off that tower. Wow. That was the Lumberjack again. We have not seen a Lumberjack in this golem deck. Wow. It looks like uh, B Village was playing that Lumberjack last, and now Ming from the top is playing the Lumberjack. Let's see what his last card is. It would make sense to be arrows. Look at Termisfa just aggressively going in for that. Because there's nothing for him to yeah, arrow. and going so. back to this, uh, Termisfa knows what Ming's deck is. Just because he's a golem, he's comfortable with using a rocket just to delay it so they can cycle back to his Inferno Tower. On the arrows go out for Term as well. The very interesting arrows because what he did there was he took out the Tombstone early just so that he could plant that Inferno Tower to take it out earlier. So that there would be no skeletons distracting it. And let's see, those archers are pretty far behind, but that's what he wants. The baby dragon and the mega minion on top of this golem as it comes in. The archers, even with a sliver of health, are still going to do hundreds of damage. So the arrows have to be deployed again. It was a zap, not arrows. Just look the at final that, card. Look at that precise placement of the inferno tower from Permisfa that the golem might split into both lanes. That Leverjack's yeah. doing some a lot of work to that inferno tower, so... So we see the almost same, a very similar rocket cycle deck from Ten. Term, except no princess and yep. guards. Ten seconds left, that golem's going in hot, that Mega Minion's going to be hitting it very hard. The golem might explode, but the miner goes in on the Ooh, top side. Oh, it hits side. the Lumberjack though, that could have been, all he needs is a zap and rocket. Ming's health is at 533, so that rocket is not oh, enough to take it out. Rocket, uh, log. But he does have the log, or the arrows to take arrows out the tower, so there we go. Boom. Term is buff for the first win of the match, for best out of five. Tombstone and Knight pressuring on the right side. Not a common card in the Lava Hound deck, the Knight, but uh, we'll see not. what goes on. He's Looks sticking like with the same. Golem. So with that Golem, Termispa is comfortable using a rocket already on that tower. Most likely he has an Inferno Tower already in rotation. And you can see even with the rocket, because of how expensive the Golem is, he's going to hit 10 Elixir again first. We'll see how he defends this one. The Inferno Tower placement is... A little far. See, the Mega Minion is not going to go for it now, so that's oh, going to make a big difference. That, that lightning hit that Miner from the last second, so that Mega Minion had to be addressed with another Mega Minion. Wow. Look at that Golem just going in hot. If that explodes on the tower, it's going to deal 100 yep. damage, a couple hundred damage right there. Takes out the Guard Shield. The Golemite's punching in right there. With that death damage, is so deadly. 300. If your term, I think you have to pull that Golem closer with the Inferno and not let any troops following up go straight to your tower. Yeah, so that rocket in the beginning was a little costly, and it didn't put him quite ahead yet. The common theme that we're seeing right now is that Tombstone is always deployed before the Golem. Right there, we see the Golem after the Tombstone is on the map. Yeah, it's nice to mix in uh, <laughs> minuscule skeletons <laughs> with the world's largest rock troop. Just look how slow that it's walking right now. 15 seconds until elix double elixir time. Look at that oh, raw going into that value. Taking out the spawn skeletons. And I think that's one tile closer. So, but look at that. The Mega Minion it needs to be up a tile. The Mega the Minion is still... locked onto the tower. The tower is locked onto the Golem. Three hits, four hits, five hits. Takes out the tower oh. with one minute left into overtime. And the Golem going for the invisible tower, making his way back to the path with his really strong pull to it right there. That is some insane play right now. Ming's Golem push went through for the second 
Wow, that Miner, can, we can't ignore the fact that Miner just hit over, I think it was four times or more right there. And now there's not many options for term. Now, especially with that Golem tanking both towers. Look at this, Archer and Knight on the uh, right one, arena tower. That one Knight has to be addressed with that Mega Minion, so that Knight's still doing some damage to the tower, distracted by the guards. I'm glad that we saw that Golem uh, figure out a way to make it and take out. But look at this, this could go into overtime here. He just needs to use the log on the tower to take it out. He might be... The only good thing going on here, though, is since he has to take out the tower, look but at this look, offensive push coming in. Termisma doesn't have enough elixir with an Inferno Tower, so that Golem's going to be dealing a lot of damage, tanking for that Mega Minion coming in, but he has guards to distract a little bit. That's game. That's right the there. classic example of you have to take out the tower to make it to overtime, which expends all your elixir. Therefore, you have nothing to defend. For a best of five. And it looks like we're still going to see Golem because of the archers. And then... Right you are. Term switches to uh, Lava Hound. That doesn't count as a prediction. It was too easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Mega Minions benefit here. Oh, the tower does. Aggro onto him. Look at the shadows. You can see it was about a quarter of a tile ahead. The skeletons almost slowed it down enough to stay behind the Lava Hound. Just look at that Lava Hound deal. One Spear Goblin's worth of damage. And the Pops Pup dealing even more damage. With that minor tanking, is that pup, that one pup, look at that one pup in the bottom right corner, bottom left corner, dealing so much damage. Dealing almost 50, a yeah. little fireball Mean, that it shoots out. Meanwhile, on the bottom left side, look at that one cute little skeleton, just, <laughs> he he's doesn't been there the whole time. A, the skeleton doesn't go down from a golemite pop, that's pretty cool, but two archers can deal hundreds, which is why minions are needed to address them. That one minion's gonna get one hit off the tower, maybe even two hits, he does get two hits off, that's gonna be a lot of value for Tamispa right now. Playing in all air deck, Mega Minion, Lava Hound, and Minions. It's scary on both fronts because neither of them have an Inferno Tower. They both have a Tombstone to pull a Hound and a Golem. I just, so there's going to be some tower damage in every push unless something goes wrong. I just love how the Golem decks incorporate a Baby Dragon and it's been proven to work. I mean, obviously these guys have played hundreds of matches. You can see that the Tombstone is quite literally the only thing you would arrow just to get the skeletons out early. With the Mega Minion, Baby Dragon, and Archers, it's a bad deck to have arrows in. Looks the like Lava Hound one. The Lava Hound and the Golem just don't care and they just walk past each other. <laughs> and the, no, the Baby Dragon didn't care about that Lava Hound. Very interesting. Termisfoot doesn't have any buildings to kind of pull that Golem again. Another but that Tombstone. Golem on the bottom left and the Pups pop in the top. And the Baby the, Dragon's on the tower. That's going that to be done. Wow. That Golem's death damage took out that tower. The Baby Dragon had a sliver of health after all that. That was a really clutch path that Baby Dragon took. 35 seconds left, and it's going to be very hard for Tumisva to do this. He's going to have to have one really big Lava Hound push to take the game for this. Or defend, on, and he has to worry about defending on the right side. He doesn't have an Inferno Tower, but a Tombstone, so it's going to be a little bit harder to take on the Golem. So if any of you are watching and wondering, hey, what can I use in an upcoming... Uh, grand challenge or classic challenge or any friendly battle this golem deck that we're seeing up top I think this one without the lumberjack Four, is actually three seconds left. super solid two seconds the pups are not enough to take out the tower wow. on the left side so after a so we're gonna be jumping into the match both of them gonna be saving up until 10 elixir let's see who makes the first move ice spirit in the back with the Rispa. <laughs> Archers split up, and then starting with the minor chip. Look oh, at the that's rocket a good rocket. Everything. Oh, no. If that oh. Ice Spirit did not freeze that yeah. Archer, it would have taken out the Archer as well. That's funny. You never say, man, why did my Ice Spirit have to freeze that? Yep. Golem coming out because he's sitting at full elixir. It's pretty crazy these days that you can rock a Golem and a Lightning spell and feel okay with that heavy of attack. <laughs> Termissa playing an Ice Golem again with an Inferno Tower. He's gonna pull that. The Mega Minion's gonna get distracted by the Ice Golem. So much value for two elixir. He, not even the Ice Golem gets distracted. The guards distract the Mega Minion. And then that Ice Golem pops, slowing down the Mega Minion for 35%. Archer's trying to pick on that one guard across the bridge there. Archer's gonna do so much damage to that Mega Minion right now. But he does survive with the minor tanking. That sliver of health, is he gonna make it to the tower? He is not because that Knight took out the Miner. I think he's using the knight just because every elixir with this big of a deck and these pushes counts, and you're going to save one over a mini P.E.K.K.A. 
Yeah. Because I've frequently seen uh, Golem mini Pegadex. And look at the Ice Golem just tank that knight right there. They're playing Ring Around the River and the knight Hiding is that just knight so going effectively. all the way back. He can use that knight in his second push. <laughs> <laughs> the knight's like, hey, skeletons, let's go this way. Termisfud knows that he has a Golem, so he's comfortable rocketing it because he does have an Inferno Tower this time. But look at that knight just deals so much damage to that tower. That night just went on a grand tour of the arena. It started off in the back tower on yeah. the left side, walked all the way around. Doing a full U-turn circle. Yeah. <laughs> and then a 180 after yeah. the uh, ice night golem. was value. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking length of lifespan on the arena, then definitely the Mega Minion's not dead. So he has to put an ice golem down. That ice golem's death damage took out that Mega Minion. That golem's still up there. It's dealing quite a bit of damage. Ming putting down that golem on the right side, but Termisfa's really... Oh, the knight's one tile from just taking the aggro from that miner, which cost him 200 damage, but we just saw one golem push uh, from Ming, and he took this tower down lower than uh, double rockets on his own tower. It's a very dangerous play. Look at the placement of those guards that Termisfa did. Takes out the archers. Hopefully it's going to tank for one of the mega minion. There's the baby dragon finally making an appearance. Right there, 634 on the top. It's not enough. He tries to get the rocket. I think that's going to be late. Yep. You have to aim for the shadow, but it was a little bit slow. Baby Dragon's just a speed demon these days. The Ice Golem was an attempted pull, and now it's just kind of wasted. But it can go take out the tower. Now, Termisva is going to try and chip away at that miner. Going in on the right side. Very risky for the win right there. Wow. So we've seen it work both ways. We've seen the rocket take it out. We've seen the Golem come back and be dominant. So Such close plays. Right now, the score is 2-2. Two, two. Both of them competing to be into the finals. Yeah, the final two. One of them is going to be playing Surgical. One of them is going to be playing B. Yep. It's going to be pretty close. But I don't I don't know if either of them have to change their decks because they're proving that they can win. It's just circumstantial upon specific plays in that match. Yep. I don't know. I just don't know why. I feel like Miners are so difficult to have full, uh, like a full counter. I haven't seen a miner get denied fully. It's I'd say about 70% of the time they're getting shots on that tower. It's yep. tough. Just It's always going through. There's no guards. It's always air units such as the Mega it, Minion yeah. taking it out. And you're like, okay, maybe I could set up my next push, but when you have a golem deck that you have to get down, it's not that Going into that match, they're both going to be sitting at 10 elixir. First move with a Goblin Barrel from Ming. We haven't seen that Ming so far. definitely spicing things up. So I think he's got the uh, Skeleton Army, Mega Minion, or not Mega Minion, sorry, Minion Horde, Goblin Barrel, that just uh, that bait deck. Look at those guards just shave away at all yeah, those skeletons. The minion horde. This is the dirty push, the Minion Horde plus but the Skeleton Army. That being said, that Miner in the back does do full damage. The full 500 damage that it did because it didn't get hit by anything. And look at those Minions just sneaking its way past. He had to use the Miner. Yep, That's quite a bit got of the damage. princess in here. This deck is real. If you're not ready for it, it's oh, and really the log dirty. misses the princess. Oh, she's planted where the same spot you'd place a furnace is, and you can't hit both. You have to pick one or the other right there. Yep. Princess does shave off the shield, so the tower is going to be able to take it out a little bit easier. Goblin Barrel and Skeleton Army. That's asking for a log right now. So but look at the goblins just stab away at the tower. If this were post update, all those skeletons would be dead. Look at those skeletons just taking away all the damage from the tower. 204. That's one princess and one log to but take out the tower. But imagine how different that could be just a few days from now. That <laughs> tower would still have maybe 500 health. Yeah, that's right, because uh, the ice golem's death damage is increasing. Look at the miner going in. It's just an endless onslaught right now. Miner going in on the right side a minute and a half into the game. Termisva is going to have to pull something really hard to take out of the tower. Or Termisva just has to defend for the next minute. And Ming is going to have to pull something really hard. A really lucky minor minion horde could sneak by possibly. Anything could happen right now, but he goes in for that goblin barrel. Yeah, Ming's the one who's putting the pressure on with the goblin barrels. So Term has to find a way to get enough rockets to that tower, which is going to be difficult. And just look at that log shave away at all the shields, turning those into skeletons. Splitting the minion horde to go on for that Mega Minion, and then the Ice Golem. Mirror, oh, mirror. card! What? So a much pressure. Super Minion Horde coming in, and then a Skeleton there. Army. What a cool deck we are seeing right now. Unless Thermispa has arrows, it's going to be a lot of Minion Horde damage. The Ice Spirit does free some of them, but the Goblin Barrel goes in for so much damage. And he's back to the Minion Horde again. 
This is insanity right there. Look at him just calm, cool, and collect right there. Just sending in so much pressure. And he's got the second tower of term down as low as his towers. First, first tower. Skeleton almost. army planted a little bit late. It did clip a little bit. That rocket so, does take out the tower. It's, so it's going to go into overtime, but I don't think the overtime is going to last very long here. Ten seconds left. That miner is on the tower. Takes Boom. it out. There's no way that Ming is going to... Or no way that... Uh, Termisma is going to be able to recover from this. Yeah, and it ends right there. I thought as he was shooting that rocket, we were closer over time. There's like, a, I think, a one or two second here. So I'm looking at your screen most of the time lately. Dang. Ming moving on to the final. Ming First guaranteed 2,500. Ming and Surgical guaranteed 2,500. Five, they're or competing for $5,000 5, today. And the title of a winner of ESWC's first Clash Royale Paris Games Week eSport tournament. Counters the Fire Spirit Oh wave. my gosh, it's your, it's your favorite card, the Furnace. You've said before that you would mirror rockets just to, to demise its existence. Let's I, see what happens here. I hate dealing with the Furnace just because you cannot ignore it. I don't think we've seen Ming using a Furnace, and what's Surgical going to do? Now, what's really annoying about the Furnace is that if two Fire Spirits get through, it does 338 damage. That's more than a Fireball, and it's so annoying to deal with. Yeah, if you get a Miner on the tower and then a couple Spirits come in, you just basically got Fireballed, and it can happen again. Fireball does 276. You 270. basically just got Mirror Fireballed a level higher. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 all right. Look at that. We haven't seen a Royal Giant this whole play. He yes, the Royal Giant tower to comeback. counter that. Oh man, the lightning spell goes down. The Royal Giant is really strong and underappreciated right now. There is so many different cards you can use right now in the Look meta. It's a great time to be alive. Oh, God, the princess misses the fire spirit. Someone get her eyes checked. <laughs> so that Royal Giant did so much ship damage. With the lightning, it did over a thousand damage. Not even in overtime yet. Wow. So Ming is at the top and then Surgical Goblin being the boot player on the bottom. This is a very heated match. Yeah, you could look at him right there on stage. Both looking just kind of calm and collected. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. One of them playing on the phone and one of them playing on an iPad. Surgical playing on the phone. We used to jump into that way more earlier on in the weekend here. You were analyzing the shorter throw on the phone versus the multi-tap ability of an iPad and the precision that it offers dragging versus tapping. <laughs> it's actually a very real strategy. Yeah. So that Archer's going in, it does take a lot of damage from the Mega Minion. It's not going to be enough. The Maybe? Knight's good for what? Two waves of fire spirits and a swing. That's about what he gets done right there. Very, very tanky. He takes out that furnace. That for was value. beautiful. And now, he's getting hit by both towers. Now Ming does have enough elixir for a lightning. Is Surgical going to plant an inferno that will be lightning very soon? Hoping to see that very soon. Right there, right, when it reaches tier 2 damage, takes it out. He but knows the Mega, the Mega Minion. Minion's out of range, though. One hit on the tower. He only, the Royal Giant only got one hit on the tower, but that's quite a bit. This is scary because he's two lightnings at 346. When you double that, that tower will be down. But the problem is, can Surgical get it down to one rocket? I don't think so. Ming goes in for that log right there. Does that guard gonna get one stab in if it gets does not go through? Ming playing a roll giant very conservatively in the back. Listen to that crowd. You can hear it roaring right now. People are getting hyped. The Inferno Tower is early, but he just has to avoid the lightning spell, but it still reaches. Okay, it was a little more than one, uh, two lightning spells. It's two lightning spells so and then that chain. Right, right now, there. 363 health. That tower will not be able to be lightninged in one shot. Surgical going in with that minor play. We haven't seen Surgical use a rocket yet. He's just good gaming. He Going in right there. He lightning knows. for 17 health. And then he goes in for the, the log, log for the win. That's going to be Ming game one. Surgical unable to execute the rocket deck the way that he has been the entire weekend. It looks like the just with the skill cap or skill level of these players, they know the I'm card worried. rotation, their card count, card elixir. So Surgical Goblin knew that there was not a possibility for him to take out the towers. So that's why he said good game a little bit earlier. Do you know why I'm worried? Why is that? Because Surgical couldn't execute a rocket deck against that Royal Giant deck, and they're starting another one, but Surgical's second deck we've seen him play is an Expo deck, which would be even worse. Oh, that Royal Giant does hard counter How, this. how is he going to make this work? Let's see. It looks like Ming formulated this deck specifically to counter Surgical Goblin. <laughs> Not a certain card, a certain player. Yes. <laughs> is there a hard counter for Surgical Goblin? <laughs> To counter Surgical Goblin, you need a Roll Giant. For a positive Elixir trade. Going again with that Roll Giant. Surgical Goblin. 
it, it looks like he's got the same damage. thing. Let's see if Surgical Goblin adapts to this. Maybe he just needs a few more Royal Giant pushes to master how he masters uh, countering the lightning spell. That that, is that far enough? No. You see right there, it does oh, stun oh, it. The wow, Royal Giant he gets avoids through the tower, one though. hit. He has to put it all the way Two. in the middle at the water to avoid the lightning on the tower. Two hits on the tower with that Royal Giant. But oh, Ming, I don't think Ming meant to put his furnace there. He did try to use he did use it to counter the miner. Oh, what was the oops for then? Maybe he meant maybe he thought the lightning would hit the tower. Look at the value of the rocket right there. Wow. And that's just the kind of break that surgical needs. I think Ming might have thought his lightning was reaching that tower. Just look at the concentration of these players right now. It's getting very heated. 28 seconds until double elixir overtime. Ice Spirit counters the Ice Spirit by absorbing that. It's going to get taken out. Splitting archers. Surgical going in for that classic princess play in the front, dealing 140 damage to the tower for slow and steady chip damage. He's, he's a good bit ahead, but with the Furnace and Royal Giant on the way. And the Lightning in route, what are you going to do here? Because that's going to be a quick catch-up for Ming. Just so insane. Surgical is forced to use the Knight to disabsorb the Fire Spirits. Just because they... You, even one fire spirit deals 169 to the tower, so 688, he just playing that rocket back and forth. And even though when he sees the Royal Giant in the back, Surgical's able to launch a rocket, Ming knows that Surgical's only counter is the Inferno, and if he puts his Royal Giant in the back, he could have lightning ready when he gets to the bridge. You can play the, the Royal Giant slow because they don't have anything to take the action when they see it. Another Royal Giant back in rotation! Yeah, that last one was played in the back so long ago that Surgical, he's already got it back. Surgical doesn't even have an Inferno Tower to counter this, so he is forced to use a log to push However, it back. However, Rocket, and they're going into overtime. Let's see if he can defend 800 health. That it, top left tower is within Rocket damage, so this is looking like bad news for Ming because he does not have enough push to reach the tower. Now Inferno. Six seconds left. Knight, maybe. Mega. Lightning, 396. And that is wow. going to be the game. For Surgical, using the same deck. So Surgical just learns from his mistakes in the first one, comes back, barely beats the Royal Giant. What do you do if you're Ming? Do you now, try it one more time? A post-game analysis of that where the first game was when... Remember when Surgical planted at one tile too far to the right? So the Lightning got the Inferno Tower and that Arena Tower. Yep. Whereas he adapted on the fly and learned from his mistakes very evidently in this game. We haven't seen too many Royal Giants, but earlier we saw Surgical within the same round or same so match. They are in the game right now? Adjust an Inferno Tower for a Lava Hound mid-match and then ended up winning that one. Yep. That one took a full round or a full match for him to adjust, but he eventually got it down. Just so insane right now. The They're just keeping these decks. They both think they could do it. The skill of these players right now, just how adaptable they are with everything, just constantly adapting to each other. They're both very confident playing the same deck. Ming thinking the Royal Giant can counter, and Surgical thinking that the Rock can bypass everything else. Royal Giant's coming in. He's mixing it up this time. The Inferno Tower is on the wall. It's going to draw the Lightning Spell out, and two Fire Spirits are going to hit that tower for the strength of a Fireball. Stronger than a Fireball. 338 damage the plus The Mirrored Fireball. Giant. The Mirrored Fireball. fireball. Oh, that's, that's tough. 1,200 left on his tower, and the Miner is more like a full game commitment to take that tower down to rocketable level. Again, he needs to absorb those Fire Spirits because they do mirror Fireball damage. So that Mega Minion is coming in hot. Does Surgical have an Ice Spirit or something inexpensive to counter it, or is he going to get two hits off of? He does use the Mega Minion. All right. The pair of archers are going to get a Look nice log hitting the Fire Spirits as they come out. And a couple guards. Wow, that clipped quite a bit. That was a value log right there. Just the so, yeah. precise placement of all of these cards, the timing and everything. Fire Spirit is one going to get into the tower. Never. Surgical will never let a Fire Spirit reach the tower. The Knight's a good answer because it's not like your main component of shutting down a Royal Giant. So you could sacrifice him to go out like that. And then look at that. Surgical planting the Princess, knowing that it's going to get taken out by the log, but he does not care. If that Ice Spirit reaches the tower, it does not. I think he was like, just experimenting with that first Inferno placement. I don't think he's going to do it again because ever since, he has denied all damage. And he's almost caught back up to the 1,200 remaining on the tower. Here comes the next Royal Giant. This is right here. This push will determine how much... Oh, I don't think... Why is that night One there? One Fire Spirit... Hitting the tower, Inferno Tower right there. It is out of lighting range, so Ming 
does have a lightning, only able to lightning that Inferno Tower. That's something you don't really want to have to do, but look at that. The Royal Giant still chips it down with a hundred and, I believe, 59 damage or so and then, and a shot. A and Royal it's... Giant in the front. The Inferno in the face. How did they cycle back to the cards, back to back? Look at these decks, they're so flexible. And then Surgical going in for that pressure on the left. Miner getting two shovels in despite that Mega Minion bullying Three it really hard. Them. Three hits. 1071 oh, health. Oh, quad spirits and a nice spirit in the middle. Tower deals with all that. The Mega Minion, you kind of just have to let that hit your tower. There's no way you're defending that right there. The Rocket goes down 578. It's still going to take two different spells at least. At least a Log oh, and yeah, a Rocket. Oh yeah, just Log line. Rocket will do it, but look at this. He needs to focus on defending first. Once he cycles back, going in for that Miner. Oh, that's almost a half, it's more than a half health this Royal Giant. This is such a close match. The Royal Giant going in, 500 health. Going in for that shot, two hits, uses the log. He's trying to delay back to the rocket, but Surgical doesn't have enough elixir. That Royal Giant oh. finishes the game. He couldn't wow. get back to the rocket and the log. There was no way. That there Royal was... Giant took out with the lightning and Mega Minion, the Inferno Tower, and had over like 60% health left there... still. There was just too much pressure from Ming for Surgical to afford That's... that rocket. Surgical did cycle back to that rocket, but he didn't have enough elixir for that. I feel like Ming really did his homework on knowing both of Surgical's decks in this tournament. He knew the oh, Expo absolutely. and the Rocket Cycle, and it's proving to be a menace, the Royal Giant. Yep. He wouldn't whip that out against any other player here. He would not, and he has been formulating these decks. Specifically, yeah. it's a deck to counter, not the Rocket deck, but to counter Surgical. Yeah. And we haven't seen a Royal Giant dominate a series like this. It's literally Ming's ability to play Surgical right now, guys. It's not even um, the Royal Giant. Because Surgical, he's got a, I think he has to choose a third deck we haven't seen yet. I mean, right. maybe something like a Golem or, or um, a Minor Bowler or something like that. Because this Royal Giant is just running reckless on him right Surgical now. Surgical playing a completely different deck. We haven't seen him play Skeletons yet. Miner in there. All right, we're in this match here. Yeah, we have not seen skeletons from Surgical yet. So the score right now is 2-1 for Ming. Both competing for a grand prize of $5,000 right now. A hog ice spirit against the furnace. That's going to be an interesting interaction the entire game. Surgical is playing a completely different deck from his Expo or his Rocket that we've seen in this tournament. And he brings Skeletons. This is a quite cheap deck he's got going on here. Very inexpe inexpensive. I wonder if Ming is still rocking that Royal Giant, or if he anticipated the counter to his counter. Yeah, this one, this is, this is like just we are observing right now and watching the mastery unfold and going to see what happens here. Look at that. The Ice Spirit and the Hog does not reach the tower with the placement of the log. I don't know... Uh, Ming didn't have art. Did he have art? Uh, yeah, he did, I guess. In uh, Royal Giant deck, he had archers. Was there? Yep. Yeah, they weren't the most prevalent card in the deck, but uh, definitely in there. Fire Spirit's dealing some chip damage to that Mega Minion. It's not going to be able to. No one's committing too hard right now. They're kind of just feeling it out. It's kind of scary approaching double elixir time here with no like major commitments or full blown pushes. That's right. Oh, you gotta assume Hog Eye Spirit maybe coming in. No, Fire Spirit's all oh, Royal Giant in the back. He does have that Royal Giant. He hasn't been playing it because he hasn't seen Rocket yet. Big push. One hit off of the tower. They're both frozen. This is the oh, Rocket, and he doesn't oh. get another hit. The Hog has only gotten one swing on each tower. Again, using the Lightning on the Inferno Tower, that Royal Giant's gonna bypass everything, get one shot off. That just it doesn't it doesn't sit right with me that a royal giant and lightning get through an inferno so easily, but we just are about to see a reduction in it, inferno. It's it is a twelve elixir yeah. combo. So, and then surgical using go the lightning for the first time, taking out the furnace. Hog lightning, nice. Miner going in on the right side. Look at the chip. Oh, damage. there we go. Surgical's getting it together now, getting in the groove. Planting yeah. down a very well-placed furnace to pull the hog. Royal Giant, though, locks onto the tower and not the Inferno, so it's a little bit too late. The Skeletons did push the Royal Giant wow. onto 
re-aggroing the Royal Giant with the skeletons. Three skeletons shove Goliath back, looking up at him like, can you please target Inferno? <laughs> and then the Royal Giant going again, he doesn't have the Inferno in rotation quite yet. Log Inferno? No logs. Skeletons, we couldn't see underneath the time remaining there. Surgical doesn't have enough Elixir to play in uh, an Inferno Tower yet. Now we have to see his answer to the double Royal oh, Giants. Oh, he plants the first one tile to the left, so the Hog, he didn't pick push. So that Hog was straight to that tower. One hit on. Wow, well, he gets a hit on it, and now he can take it, it out with Lightning. It's within Lightning, that's right. Guards distracted, that's no big deal. Surgical just needs to cycle back with the Log. Another Lightning right there. I'm waiting for that, and wow. he goes in! Surgical, Hog Lightning. The man who's been playing Rocket Cycle with his minor chip and Expo busts Hog Lightning out like he's been playing it the entire tournament. These are some of <laughs> these are the two best players of the tournament, especially the Swiss bracket that we've been using. That is insane. It's just two, two. When best. did he have time to play a fourteen hundred matches with this deck to get so good at it? Wow. And then, do you think he had it ready or like? was like, oh, it's a Royal Giant, I have to brrr, hog lightning. <laughs> I have no idea, but Surgical is ready to play right now. He could be playing his Expo deck, he could be playing his Hog Cycle Lightning deck, or he could be playing his Rocket deck, and Ming has to second-guess himself if he is going to play the Royal into Giant it. or not. We're jumping into Spell Valley. Spell Valley. At 2-2, two -two, a beautiful arena, tie game. Let's see who's walking away. The ESWC 2016 Paris Games Week, Clash Royale champion. Hog going in straight to that furnace. It wasn't pick pushed, but maybe Surgical did want that. Mega Minion doesn't even get any value, just gets sniped by the tower. Again what? with the Royal Giants. Yeah, he loves putting it right. He put it behind the tower because he saw the miner start digging, but it was for the wrong tower. Yeah. Royal Giant going in, supported with the furnace. Surgical does have an Inferno Tower right there, just out of range of that lightning, so Ming has the lightning from there. Oh. <laughs> One of the coolest things that just... Oh, reload, reload that. I've got my screen over here. We'll get that going. Royal Giant and Mega Minion doing massive damage. That tower is going to be going down right now. Oh my gosh, that Royal Giant wow. Mega Minion was unanswered and it had too much health left. This is looking like bad news for Surgical because Ming just has to play on the defensive right now. But there is 40 seconds left in overtime, until overtime starts. That's tough though, because with a Royal Giant, that's probably the best situation you could ever ask for, being able to deploy it in Surgical's we, base. We haven't seen any of this scenarios happen yet, where that Royal Giant has absolute lane control. So he goes with the Hog towards the center, predicting a Furnace, but it's not deployed. One he hit drops the tower. a good game. Look at this counter push coming. Royal Giant in the middle. This, furnace. This is going to be very stressful for Surgical right now because the Royal Giant could be planted at any time. I could expect it very soon once he has an elixir. But now Surgical has to second guess himself and predict when the Royal Giant is going to be played so that he can play the Inferno Tower. Otherwise, it looks to be countered by guards. He, this just goes to show how on point that last game he played was with yep. this. If Guards oh. there to counter the Inferno Tower. That Royal Giant goes and sneaks past it, snipes it away from there. Full health Doesn't and Mega Minion. Doesn't even need to use the lightning on it. Surgical's Mega Minion dies to the Mega Minion. The tower is taken out. One hit, two swings, the tower's down. 30 seconds left. There's not much left to do. Hanging out in double elixir as we approach overtime. It's not going to be in overtime on this one here. Surgical dropping good game. Looks like the only thing he really wanted was for Ming to reply. Finally gets the thumbs up. Yep. So, these guys have played really well. Uh, this this last match does not reflect the intensity what? that this uh, entire series has brought. That and is intense right now. I was going to say in the beginning, we kind of had a little disconnect on our screen. We had to reload it. And what I was going to say is, the funniest thing is, a Royal Giant or a Hog right Lightning there. is going to win this tournament. And Ming just wins the Ming tournament with a Royal Giant deck. Takes the tournament for $5,000 right there. Ladies and gentlemen, Ming is the winner of the ESWC tournament. He could win in Shanghai and he could win in Paris. Winner of the Shanghai tournament, winner of the ESWC, beating Surgical Goblin by a very close match, 3-2. Somebody get this guy a contract. He's the, probably one of the hottest Clash Royale players in the world right now. Not even probably. He is Ming.
goes for it all the way. Surgical, well fought to second place. And Such the fact that he changed decks so dramatically at the end there, just insane that he was able to pull together that win with that Hog Lightning. Just such an intense match. Ming definitely formulated that Royal Giant specifically for Surgical. Right now, this interview looks hot right now. Just, Ming finally has time to speak. He's like, give me the mic. I want to tell you guys about this Royal Giant. It's so good. He was holding onto this deck. Keep dubbing, keep dubbing. And, and then I just thought, the Royal Giant will win the game. And you're right, it did win the game. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. <laughs> I don't want to dub because like, I'm not trying to poke fun. It's just funny because we don't know what they're saying. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think it's even being broadcasted to our viewers. We're no. just kind of here talking over it. You can sort of hear the arena, though. It's lit. Here you have your third and fourth place finishers. Wow. So that, despite Surgical losing the finals, he still did place second place, winning $2,500. Good for him. He's still a winner. He deserves it. Wow. And then I think we're just getting some more words from uh, ESWC here in the event in general. Yep. Double mics. Yeah, this one doesn't work. This one sounds better. I really like the Royal Giant because not only did it win, but it's really yellow when it comes to the hair on its head. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then all these things you see. Rocket, rocket. I was tired of it. I'm going to nerf it myself. I have contacts. I'll make it happen. Thank you. Why does the Royal Giant have less health than a giant, despite it having chainmail? It has Inferno more. Inferno Dragon, baby dragon. Well, the Inferno Dragon has that barrel, so he's flying a little bit slower. But he has less health, and he has a helmet. Uh oh. You gotta shout out, uh. Rumham. And. Rainy. For at the, at the uh, coronation, they brought that up. Yeah. Fax stealing over here. 1,000, 2,500. Try bringing those to your late, nearest bank and cash them. They'll look at you like you're oh, a crazy person. Oh, the three musketeers person. are presenting them the prize. Wow, they really went up in elixir value. <laughs> look at that. Ming winning first place gets a gold medal. It's like the Olympics. Look at these guys. They've got medals and everything. Yes, this this is a... What is that? It looks like... Oh, that's the uh, ESWC logo in gold and blue. Fifteen hundred. Like, wait, who won this? <laughs> <laughs> wait, you want two of them? No, wait, give me that back. Should have just left it to the three musketeers to deal with that stuff. Yeah. B Village, there winning Did third place. Did you win place. this one? Two thousand five hundred. Did you win this one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want this? <laughs> oh man, Ming wants to go back home and say, "Can you multiply this by ten? Because that's what I want in Shanghai. Over a hundred thousand people involved." Yep. This was 128, so it scales proportionally. If not, this is even more when you blow it up to that. It, the scale is very fair for yeah. what it was. Surgical is by no means ashamed. If I was walking with 2,500, I'd be a winner. You're a winner nonetheless, OJ. Thank you. Your positive elixir trades have affected all. And look at that. Just like in Shanghai, he cracks his first smell after winning the prize. Wow. Kiss the cup. Kiss the cup. Kiss the cup. We know you can hear you. You can hear us, Ming. <laughs> a global hero brought to you all. Next time, someone from France has to make the top four. I will. I will. <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Ming wins $5,000. And there's just so many tournaments coming up. On November 6th, there's going to be the King's Cup. And then there's the CR Coronation. Yep. The CR North America and, tournament. And there's a North America one in uh, Toronto as well, right? Yeah, the Toronto one is yeah. the next week after the King's Cup. There's just so many. It's tournament tournaments. season, baby. All right, oh, let's yeah. see if Royal Giants. <laughs> the chat. Let's see if these Royal Giants continue to be used. In my opinion, no. It was the counter to the player, not the counter to a card. Well, it was the counter to a card that the player would use. That's his card that is choice if you use. Yeah. He, he, the Royal Giant just countered all of Surgical's comfort zones, yeah. where he had domination of the Expo, he had domination of the Rocket, and it just rocked everything. What a nice picture. 
Ming has probably multiple uh, Facebook profile banner options to choose from now, or Twitter options. Yeah. Should I switch my profile picture to the Shanghai victory, or should I show my <laughs> ESWC trophy? Well, this week I'll go with the ESWC because the Three Musketeers showed up. Oh, yeah. I hope they get some pictures of the Three Musketeers. This guy's a, a lively fella. He should host more events. Bringing this crowd to its feet in what was a great weekend. I'm not sure. I'm sure those guys are going to go off. I think the French casters might have some words with them. But I think that's pretty much it here from us. Yeah. That's like a huge thank you, ESWC, for bringing us out here. It Absolutely. was fun to cast. It was worth it losing the boys. There were some crazy matches. And now going forward into our personal tournaments coming up, we've got a good idea of what decks are working. What's going on? I have a feeling that the King's Cup that we're going to be participating in is going to be a lot more fun. and Yeah, and just like this, guys, with the final four on stage, there's going to be hundreds of people, or a few hundred more at that. I don't even predict a YouTuber to win because of how much skill we're going to see from the public and someone yeah. just come and dominate through. I, I'm just going to be there to have a good time. I do know five players that are going to be at the King's Cup, and those five players combined have over half a million tournament cards won. So I expect yeah. to see all of them to steamroll us YouTubers. Yeah, it's going to be fun, and I'm glad that all the YouTubers were able to hype it up to what it's going to be, but I don't really see one of them winning unless they really practice a lot. Yep, we're too busy making videos. Yeah, so... That wraps it up for today. That's going to wrap it up for today, today and the entire ESWC 2016 Paris Game Convention Tournament. Thanks for tuning in today. Stay tuned for more quality OJ. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take it easy.